and it's Zach Levine, right? Zach Levine has been a name that has been in the trade rumor mill, seems like the past couple of months. And there was a report from The Athletic, from James Edwards, that the, said that the Chicago Bulls and the Pistons have had conversations involving Zach Levine, league sources say. Chicago appears to be locked in on a package involving Boyan Bogdanovich and one of Detroit's blue chippers. So when they say blue chippers, they're talking about Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Asar Thompson, or Jalen Duran for Zach Levine. So the Bulls and the Pistons have continued to talk about possibly a trade down the line. Uh, you look at Zach Levine's contract, he's under contract for the next couple of years. He's an all-star. He's available. Uh, we've heard from, you know, Adrian Morjanowski of ESPN saying that, you know, his, his trade value is incredibly low right now. Um, you know, there isn't really a trade market for Zach Levine. But the, the Bulls want Bojan, and they want one of our young core guys. I think if the price for Levine is – "Quote unquote, your second leading scorer in Boyan Bogdanovich, and a core guy you have drafted in the lottery. I think if you're the Pistons, you have to ask yourself: Are we ready to compete? I think that's the main question. Do I think the Pistons are ready to compete? I don't. And I think there's pros and cons of making a trade for Zach Levine right now." I think the pros would be you you have a, a guy that can get you 25 points. You have a guy that can get to the basket at will. And you wouldn't really worry about him initiating the offense because Zach Levine, for what it's worth, is a hell of a basketball player. Um, he dropped 51 on the Pistons and <laughs> the Bulls still lost. Hell of a player. Hell of a score. I think we all understand that with Levine. I think the cons with Levine are a couple of things. It's the contract. It's the contract for me. Um, the contract's pretty high. I think that's why a lot of teams are very hesitant to offer anything of value to the Chicago Bulls for Zach Levine. It's a hell of a contract. Obviously, the Bulls gave it to them, and they're having regrets. They really are. They, they, they thought that they were going to be a team that compete in the Eastern Conference, and obviously, you know, what happened to Lonzo Ball was, you know, sad for them. You know, obviously, they. you look back, I mean, they were one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference when Lonzo Ball was healthy. But that is not the case. He's not healthy. Um, Levine has been in and out of the lineup with injuries. Colby White has been playing really good when Levine was out. You know, the Bulls were starting to win games without him. And Colby White kind of has been unlocked in Chicago. Uh, but I think another con... I do want to bring up his defense. I think defensively, when you talk about Zach Levine, he's not known as a quote-unquote lockdown defender. Now, could he be a passable defender here in Detroit? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But I think if you were to trade for Levine, it's probably going to be Bojan and Ivy. Um, I think that's what the Bulls would want, personally. Um, I don't think they want another big. They still have Nikola Vucevic. Not really sure if they want, want another wing. They have Pat Williams. We have Asar Thompson. I think it would probably be Boyan and Ivy if I would have to guess. And to me, I would pass on it because I believe in Ivy that he could get to the same status as a Levine. Now, obviously, you know, Levine is an all star. I understand that. I get that. But who's to say Ivy can't turn into that same type of player? So personally, I would probably pass on it just for the contract and what that means for, you know, Jade and Ivy going forward. Um, but I do want to go to the comments to see what you guys are saying about this this trade package. Again, the Bulls would want a Boyan Bogdanovich and one of the Pistons core players, whether that's Kate Cunningham, Jalen Duren, Jade and Ivy, or Asar Thompson. Um, I want to see what you guys are saying about this. Um, not a room... For not enough room for Jay and Monty. One's got to go because I don't trust Monty to play him. Same here, Steven. Mr. Jones. Levine is an all-star, and it's an offensive league anyways. Those are valid points. 
they are. He is an all star. This is an offensive driven league. I'm saying if you, you were to add Zach Levine, I think the Pistons would average more points a game. I think the offense would be more fluid. I do. But I, I think it, it, it would be weird to see a Cade Cunningham and Zach Levine backcourt because I don't I don't really know how it could coexist in terms of who's going to be the alpha, who's getting the last shot. Um, does it does it become Zach Levine's team? Does K played second fiddle to Zach Levine? I don't know. Those are questions that I think all of us have. Um, and also, it's like the contract is pretty damn high. It, it, it's really high. Like I'm just gonna look it up, just just for you know whatever. Because I know some people probably don't know how much he's making. So Levine signed a five-year, two hundred and fifteen million dollar contract, and he'll be a unrestricted free agent when he's thirty-two in twenty twenty-seven. So he's making forty million this year. He'll be making forty-three million in twenty twenty-four, twenty twenty-five, uh, forty-five million in twenty twenty-five, twenty twenty-six, and forty-eight million where he has a player option in twenty twenty-six, twenty twenty-seven. So. Uh, that was one of the main points I had. It's, you know, hell of a player, all-star, can probably average 30 on this team easily. But it's like, that's a lot of money to commit long-term if you're the Pistons. That's a lot of money. Um, I, I just don't know if the Pistons are ready for that type of player. I really don't. Um, you know, do it effortlessly, comments, the contract sucks. But it won't be bad in a couple years of the salaries raising. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I think if you, you want an all-star level type of player, they're going to cost you 30, 40 million. It, like I said, it's that's what it is. That's where the league is heading. Um, like bench players are going to be making 10 to 15 million in a few years. Um, you said, Johnny, think Pistons fans in the organization are stuck in the old days. No one is playing defense. We got to get with the times and scoring over 120 points a game. Yeah, you're 100% right, Johnny. You are. Um, you can't be locking people down like it's 0-4 anymore. Um, can't even play defense nowadays without, you know, the rest blowing a whistle. But it's just, are you comfortable with the contract? Because I think if, if you were to trade for Levine, um, you're you're going to get a contract. He's going to be under contract for the next couple of years. And then you have to see what you're doing with Cade uh, because he is extension eligible. Do you give him that rookie max extension? Don't know. Um, but if you think about it, a lot of your money would be tied up between Levine and Cade if you were to make um, that type of trade if you're the Pistons.